What is going on everyone? My name is Boyd and I am back with some more Age Mythology, the Titans action spawning in the right side of the map in the red color playing as Zeus. His name is Redu. His opponent today in the My Voices <coughs> being funny because it's in the morning. Uh, his name is Scardi. He's blue and he is playing as Zeus. The map is Sacred Ponds and this is where we're getting to the exciting point in the tournament. This is is the semi-finals of the season one champions league what an absolute time to be alive these players have played exceptionally well to get to this point the best of the best there is no doubt about that uh, and coming into the playoffs having to take games off some very very strong players redo i believe had to fight against Joe to beat him and, and did so in a in a grueling five set or five game series. Scardi um, uh, had to play, oh my God, I cannot remember. I Kill You Die? Can't remember, but I, I know that that was also a grueling series. So all the games have been incredibly close uh, and it, it is so, so much, so much excitement, so much good age mythology being played. Uh, and, and I would argue that the level of this tournament, uh, regardless of the fact that we don't have our goats, our greatest of all times in it, has been the highest level of Age of Mythology I've ever seen. And I've seen a lot of Age of Mythology. And you compare these games to like the Magyar Mister Magic games, and, and you got to say that this level is up there uh, in terms of efficiency, in terms of micro strategy. All of that is going very, very well. The map is Sacred Ponds. And like we've been talking about, this postseason is done in the Bill Gregg style. We've got that first game on one of those unique new maps. Um, so the players haven't played a lot on them. However, uh, they do. They, they, the players have so much experience and it's really hard to get a map out there that's so unique that the players have no idea how to play on it. So this map will play out similarly to the uh, to Mediterranean. However, there's a lot less fish. So this middle pond here is so much less important. So losing the water doesn't matter at all. And it's also, um, this is almost a hybrid of marsh and Mediterranean. So the, the hunt on this map is crazy big. You can see you got deer over here. You've got boar over here. Uh, there's the deer here. Lots of food on the map. So booming after losing the water is very, very doable. Uh, and being aggressive as an alternative is also very, very doable. So I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, the loser of the water go for some sort of all-in land push to a gold star because the gold mines, they're all forward on this map. One, two, both forward. Uh, and unlike Mediterranean, where it's really easy to cause a choke point between the water and... Uh, and your home base to make it really difficult for an army to shift locations. This map, Sacred Pond, that choke point is much further away, and it's very simple to break down a wall here and make your way over to the other gold mine and just switch locations to get uh, a gold staff. Uh, same thing over here for Redu, as we can see. The gold mine's actually a little bit worse for him as he's close, close to gold mines, quite far away. Uh, but, you know, such is life. Uh, and you have to deal with those uh, slight differences. Uh, the, there has been... Ooh, Redo ooh, does notice it. Nice play by Redo. There has been a little bit of a development in the map scripting realm. Uh, and if you watched the merge mo mode that we uh, did uh, with Rebels Rising, Hagrid, Mr. Boat, Shadowfax, and Joe the other day, um, you would have noticed, or maybe would have noticed, that they were actually played as well with mirror maps, which is um, which is a really unique concept. And I, I think it will be an interesting thing to try in the competitive scene, um, just so that we can see what it would be like to have complete balanced maps, um, no unfairness to happen. Obviously, there's always going to be something going on. But here's the Athena coming through for Redo, 90%, slightly faster than Scardi, who's, who's going up with one more villager. I think he had some idle villager time there, and maybe the population is exactly the same. Um, very, very similar here, actually. Scardi's got a couple more fishing ships, it looks like, than... No, both have seven. Both have seven fishing ships. So I'm not sure where that extra population for um, Redu came from. Uh, or, or from Scardi, but <clears throat> totally fine. 
Trireme is going to be coming out. Scott is just going to have to play a little bit defensively. He's going to get pushed off on Fish for just a touch here, but luckily for him, that was a 25 fish uh, fishing ship carry capacity there, and he's going to be uh, putting those Trireme into his docks here. A little bit of um, idle docks here may actually matter quite a bit as that fourth Trireme is already out. That's going to change things. It's going to force Sky to sit under his docks here. We can see a bolt onto one of these Triremes, and he's taking a lot of damage here, uh, bringing him back into this location. The dock's going to help out finally, and uh, Redu's spraying arrows all over Scardi right now. He's trying to pump out ships, but Redu is just playing this so ruthlessly efficiently right now with six Trireme perfectly produced already, and Scardi coming back into this bottom here has to sit under here. He's got four idle fishing ships, five idle fishing ships, six idle fishing ships. I can't count to save my life, but you guys knew that. Um, so complete and utter destruction right now from Redu onto the water of Scardi. We do see a restoration. They're trying to keep this uh, Trireme alive. If he hits Q, it will come back up to full HP very, very fast. But now Redu with nine Trireme to five Trireme of Scardi, who's sitting at 45 of 45 population to Redu's 53 of 55 uh, population, just completely decimating Scardi right now. And Scardi cancels his Trireme production there and decides to start it again for some reason. Not sure what he's going for. Uh, definitely cancelling Trireme wouldn't be a bad idea here. And do we see Redo doing something similar? No. We do have the two Minotaurs greeting each other in the middle of the map here. And Redo's Minotaur does turn around and gets the kill there. So even winning on the land so far. We've got the Catascopus up at the top of the map. What's happening in Redo's base? Still pumping out villages, making houses. And trying to garrison those Trireme there. But Redo... He is not backing off here, and Scardi taps out in 6 minutes and 25 seconds. What a complete, ruthless decimation here by Redu with just cold efficiency here. Unfortunately, something must have gone awry there with Scardi's build, and he was not able to keep up on Trireme production. We're going to be able to see that in the military here with, or sorry, in the improvements, no, in the mythology tab, we can see that Redu managed to produce four more Trireme than Scardi, which is just absolutely huge when both units are exactly the same. Uh, you cannot get that far behind economic wise. It's fairly similar in all honesty. This food here should have been, uh, this food here should have been a little bit in front actually for Redu. Obviously, Scardi grabbing some, uh, some, some, um, food on the land to continue villager production. The civilian unit high is exactly the same. And I'm not even sure that this game was quite as over as Scardi thought it was. Tapping out there super early. Uh, I think that maybe had he cancelled these Trireme here, these four Trireme, he could have potentially come over and just grabbed the town center and then tried to just play for the late game and force Redu to make some sort of adjustment uh, and and continue uh, to get some advantage on his on his um, on his what you call it on his economic advantage for having the fish because. I mean, if you think about it, these fish over here that he's killing with uh, Scardies are really, really inefficient. You have to put another dock over this side to make them efficient. Um, so even though there's 14 fish on this pond, you need to put up docks everywhere to make them worthwhile. Because if you don't, then it's just like, well, that's that's a lot of missed out of food there. So I, I feel like Scardy should have given this a bit more of a go. Tapping out a bit early here. Unfortunate, but first win does go to Redo. And uh, if you've enjoyed this game, uh, short as it may be, please consider hitting the follow button on the Twitch. If you're on the YouTubes, hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you guys in the next game.